Good morning, students, and welcome to another edition of FinFix. It's Mr. Finn coming at you again from Neighborly Northville. And today, we are going to continue our discussion of electric fields and voltage, voltage, as it relates to electric fields. And we're going to use our gravitational field as an example. Uh, before we get into that, at the conclusion of today's episode, there will be a electric field activity that I want you to do. You'll be able to use this, get it on classroom. You'll be able to uh, download it, or you can work with it right on the classroom site. But you'll need to submit that sometime before Thursday at midnight. So if you can get that done before Thursday at midnight, it's on electric fields. And it's going to use the same simulation that I showed you just a couple of days ago in our, uh, one of our earlier videos. As far as uh, the rest of the week goes, guys, just keep up with it. I got a couple Google Forms coming out, one to get you squared on electric fields. I'll get that out tomorrow or today. It'll be coming up on Classroom. Just a few questions. Make sure you're okay there. And then we will do a Google Form at the end of the week on some of our material on electric fields slash potential energy electrical slash voltage. So look for that on Friday as always. And uh, keep up with the stuff guys. I know you're doing a great job. The stuff I've been getting has been fantastic. So we'll do what we can to stay uh, you know kind of relevant in this time frame and we'll make the most out of our time together. So let's go ahead and look at the visual on a voltage as it relates to potential energy and electric fields. Okay guys, let's take a look at what we have here. If you'll recall our earlier discussion, we had a gravitational field. We had one kilogram box raised to a height of 10 meters. Now, the zero meter or the ground level was called our zero gravitational potential or zero in terms of measuring gravitational potential energy. Then we had a negatively charged ground or a plate, which we're going to call the zero electric potential energy value. Even though we know because it has a negative charge, it probably has some amount of coulombs in terms of negative charge, maybe it's excess electrons. Up here, some distance away, we have a positively charged plate. Maybe that's the absence of electrons. Maybe it's, if this is down here, negative 5 nanocoulombs, this is plus 5 nanocoulombs. Whatever you want. But we know that the charged plate up here is some distance away from the negatively charged plate down here, which we are going to assign as zero electric potential. Hmm. Electric potential is another word for voltage. But what is voltage really? Remember we talked about electric potential energy in the previous video compared to gravitational potential energy? When I raise something up against the field, I'm creating a potential energy value. So if I take these charges and push them closer to the positive plate, removing them from the negative plate, I am creating electric potential energy. It would be measured in joules. But the value of the electric potential energy relative to the size of the charge, that is electric potential, or otherwise known as voltage. So what is that? It means that we have, are long in the same electric potential. This field is still the field, but each charge is different. I have a positive charge here, maybe it's one proton. Then I have a two positive charge here, that's two protons. Each of those charges, even though the charge is different size, would be at the same voltage. They would be at the same electric potential. They would actually be subjected to the same electric field. Hmm. But the size of those charges is different. So if we take the idea of electric field being force per charge, 
we don't know about the full, well, we know the feel will be the same for both these charges, but what's not the same is the charge itself. So, let's take our definition of voltage. If you guys can recall, or maybe just in your minds, uh, picture a pressure pusher, like a big pump, and the pump pushes things through the mechanism. If it was a water, for example, a water pump, a big pump, like a pump in a dishwasher or a pump in a clothes washer, it would push water through. And a pump acts like a voltage supply. Think of an electric pump pushing things around. So this voltage between these two plates will push these charges from the positive plate to the negative plate. How effectively it will do that will be the relation of the voltage. We're going to use the term electric potential energy per quantity of charge. Hmm. It's electric potential energy. We only talked about that last time. Each of these values will be at the same voltage because they're the same distance away, but they will not have the same electric potential energy because they are different sizes of charge, similar to if I put a 2 kilogram box up here next to the 1 kilogram box. Each of those boxes would be in the same gravitational field. They would both accelerate at 9 meters per second squared, but they would not have the same energies. Because remember, in gravitational energy, mass times gravity times height, that's an indication of how much gravitational potential energy you have. Because these two charges are not the same size, they would have different amounts of electric potential energy. Another way of thinking about this is if I took force and I wanted to find force, some electric field, that would simply be E times Q. If I just multiply the Q over, then Q times E becomes a value for force. And if I also think of potential energy this way, in order to increase potential energy of this or any field, I would have to do work against the field. I would have to push these charges up against the electric field to create more potential energy. The same way that I can lift a box against a gravitational field. I have to do work, and work has not changed its definition. Work is still force times distance, and it must be parallel. So if I do work against the field, I'm exerting a force through a distance. Well, that force happens to be charge times electric field. So if we substitute that, the potential energy of the object or the work done is actually charge times electric field times distance. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Now there are other ways to find voltage. For example, for a point charge, a single point charge, you might find voltage expressed this way. KQ over R. Now why KQ over R? Well guys, that's not very challenging. If you simply look at Coulomb's law, KQ1, Q2 over R squared. And we know that voltage is going to be energy divided by charge, well, force times distance, I have to multiply by an r here. None of those r's would cancel. That would give me my work done. If I ran and divided by charge to give me voltage, I'd have to divide by one of those charges. And 
go up there, K G two over R. Simply just taking force times distance and divided by charge. So we have voltage two ways to describe this. We have the voltage described in a parallel plate situation, which is quite frequent. You'll see that a lot. These are called capacitors, by the way, manifest those tomorrow. Or a point charge situation, where you have voltage is KQ over R, stemming from the same type of relationship in Coulomb's law. Remember, work done against the field will increase voltage. So if the field does work, then the voltage will reduce. So if the electric field does work to push these two charges in this direction towards the negative plate, well, that would mean that voltage would lower. So if I draw these charges here, then the charges in blue would be at a lower electric potential or a lower voltage than they would be up here. Let's say that it's similar to the gravitational field. Let's say that these are 10 volts. Remember, the ratio of the, of the energy per charge can be the same for both, but the total energy might be different because the charges are different. If it's 10 volts up here, it may only be 2 or 3 volts down here, based on how far the field had to move. And we'll revisit voltage again tomorrow. But for today, let's just understand that voltage is a couple of different things. Number one, and most importantly, it's electric potential energy divided by the quantity of the charge. Electric potential is a new name for voltage. It's a synonym. But electric potential and electric potential energy are not the same thing. This is why if we could have a voltage of 5,000 volts in, let's say, a balloon, then it wouldn't be dangerous. You could stick a balloon on your head with 5,000 volts because the charge is very, very small. And sub subsequently, the energy involved is very, very small. You wouldn't even feel a balloon. But 5,000 volts from a circuit, if you touched an open wire with 5,000 volts, that might be much more dangerous because even though the voltage is the same, 5,000 volts, the charge is different and much larger. And if the, numer if the denominator of charge is different, that must make the numerator unusually large. Look at that over here. If you have an unusually large charge and your voltage is 5,000, that must make your potential energy much, much greater. And it's energy that's dangerous. So the exact value of voltage doesn't necessarily mean something's dangerous. We're going to need to look further into that situation. But hopefully today, guys, you can get the idea that the voltage is not that much different than your a parallel system of gravitational interactions. Doing work with the field means that voltage is going to lower. If I do work against the field, I'm pushing those charges back up again, away from the negative plate, and I'm raising the voltage. And we're talking about positive charges, because remember, an electric field tends to go the way a proton would go. Okay, guys, let's wrap okay, up. Okay, guys, now don't be bummed out. Voltage is hard to understand, so we use some examples to try to work with it. But if you think about voltage as the electric pressure that's going to push charge through an area or down through a circuit, you're going to do yourselves a lot of good. We'll go through that water pump example tomorrow. But for now, let's just get the idea of an electric field and a gravitational field being very similar. And voltage being the ratio of the energy per unit of charge. So the plus one charge and the plus two charge could be at the same voltage, but not have the same amount of energy because the amount of charge is different. Today, make sure you get that uh, chance to look at the electric field simulation. I won't try to uh, grade that up as an activity, guys, for today. And I'll have a Google form ready tomorrow, tomorrow on electric fields and energy. We'll do a visit on voltage again tomorrow, and we'll move a little bit closer to the end of this uh, section by the end of the week. 
Take your time, guys, and make sure you get through this homework question. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon.